Hey there, it's Rebecca R. Jones here with you, and I am going to be answering questions today. Firstly, what is Ink Tense? And secondly, how is it different from other products? And then lastly, what's the difference between Ink Tense pencils and Ink Tense blocks? I'd like to say thank you so much for your patience with me as I've not been around for a while, as I've just been resting and recovering uh, from a concussion. And honestly, I am feeling just so much better and been working away in the background for some really exciting things, which I'm going to share with my email subscribers first. So if you are not an email subscriber, you may wanna consider popping over to rebeccarjones.com and becoming a subscriber just anywhere. I'll send you a freebie for subscribing and then you can um, be sure to be one of the first people to know all the fun stuff that I'm in the middle of um, creating. So with that aside, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, chat with me in the comments, and let's get started. So first of all, what is Ink Tense? Now, Ink Tense is exactly what the name actually says, Ink tense. It's actually a play on words and it means that this is ink that is intense. It's vibrant ink. And that is a very different thing to watercolor. And I think a lot of times people get watercolor and ink tense confused because as I'll show you here, this is from Joent. This is ink tense pencils. This is from Joent. This is watercolor pencils. And to be frank, they look very similar, don't they? They're in a wood casing, there's some color in them. They've even got this kind of signature thing going on in the bottom. They look very similar. The difference here in the way that the actual outside of it looks is that this has some edges so that when it rolls, it kind of sticks to the surface because it's got a spot to stop, whereas the ink tense is round. But that is actually not the largest difference. The difference is is that watercolor, although it is also water soluble, just like ink tense is water soluble, which I'll explain, the difference is is that watercolor will lift again because it's not permanent. Ink tense is permanent. Once it has been activated with water, watercolor will continue to allow you to work with it and move it around. It's not permanent. Ink tense, once it's activated, it will remain permanent and you can work on top of it without disturbing those layers below. That is the very big difference between watercolor, which is not permanent, and ink, which is permanent. And that is the case with just about any ink on the market. Like you would see in something like this, this ink is sloshing around in a container. Ink tense is actually already dry and it's waiting for you to activate it by getting it wet. Once you get it wet and it dries, then it will be permanent. In the case of normal inks, it is already wet. You put it on your surface, it dries, it's permanent. Ink tense, you get it wet first. Once it dries, it's permanent. That's the only difference. So you get to start with something that is dry. The nice thing about that is that it creates this ability for you to work with it in a little bit more controlled way, which can feel less scary than putting a bunch of liquid ink to just run everywhere. So yes, you can control liquid ink, but it takes less experience and this is great for beginners. So my opinion is that Ink Tense is a great beginner tool because once you use your watercolor, you may find that you pick up your brush and you start going and you actually lift work that you worked very hard to get just how you wanted it and then it lifts up because it is reworkable because it's not permanent. Ink tense is going to stay put and allow you to keep adding layers of color on top. That's the benefit of ink tense. Now that you understand that, what's the difference between ink tense pencils and ink tense blocks? Well, let's open this up here. Here's my small set of 24 colors. They come in a 12 color set. In my opinion, just about anything that you buy in color, colored pencils, watercolor pencils, watercolor, ink tents, anything, 
I recommend that you get one color, a sample, try the product, see if you actually like how it works. If you love it, then get yourself 24 colors. If you absolutely get use out of those 24 colors, then go on and purchase a largest set that you can get your hands on when you know that that investment is going to be worth your money. I want you to be using the products that you spend money on and I think that that is the most wise way to do it. So get yourself 24 colors and you're going to see how far that goes. There is a really good range of brights and your kind of primary colors and then there's also these really um, good earthy tones and you can mix all of these to create more colors. I want you to see this up close so that you can see the difference here. So this right here is swatches of the 72 colors which is kind of nice to see. It's the same in blocks and pencils, they're all the same, they're just in a different shape. The difference here, as you can see, is that with the pencil, there tends to be this kind of grainy texture that gets left behind on the surface as you glide your pencil across the paper. When you put blocks on, you don't really get that, and it's because of the way in which we apply it. And I want to show you how that is the case. You can take this pencil right here, which is mauve, and you can just literally put it right on the surface of your paper. You can also pick up a block and rub it right across your surface. You get a lot of color that goes richer and deeper faster. What you want, though, is a very easy to melt consistency and as you can see this is going to leave a little bit of a residue and this is going to leave a little bit of a residue because we applied the color straight to the paper and this is the same on this watercolor paper or um, paper that you have page prepped and if you don't know how to page prep go to pageprep.com and enter your details I'll send you some information for free and it'll help you learn that process um, I have a course that goes into all sorts of detail, but you can get lots of free content there. So here, you can see that even if you were to do this on a Bible page, you would get the same concept. There'd be these little bits of granulated stuff going on there. And, you know, it adds texture, it's interesting, but it's not necessarily what we're after. What blocks will allow you to do is take your brush, get it wet, and then you just add some color to your brush by wiping it on here, just like you would watercolor. And then you can go in and look at the richness of that color. So beautiful, in my opinion. And so rich at a very similar look to watercolor, yet it's more vibrant than watercolor. Get even more on there. And then I can go in with a wet brush and I can add even more color and I can just keep on going over this and I'm going to keep on adding whatever amount of color that I want. The nice thing about page prep is it means that you can actually keep on adding more color and it's not going to soak through like it would on regular Bible paper. So if you page prep this product is going to be absolutely amazing but the benefit of pencil is that it allows you to go in with detail and trace, say, say you wanted to create some sort of design and you don't want to trace with pencil because you're going to get all these kind of funky gray lines, you can actually go in with this and then when you add your controlled amount of water right where you want it, color can only run where you put water. So it's going to stay within the lines and just allow you to have that shape of color exactly where you want it. So if you like the idea of adding color and then applying a wet brush in order to control how this goes on, then this is perfect for you. If you don't mind and you feel confident with a the brush, then you can actually see, I get this wet, I go in here, I get all the water off, so now I have a damp brush, not a wet brush, and I get a little bit of this color on, then I can go in and create this. But I would like to say that it's taken me 
some time to get used to how to use my brush and I'm going to need to practice if I'm going to get better and better at this. As you can see, you're going to get a lot richer color and it's going to be smoother than if you use pencils, but pencils will allow you better detail. As you can see, I have to practice in order to be good at this. And obviously I'm kind of moving my surface around just demoing this, but that is the difference. You can get some texture by using the color direct to the paper, but you can get a smoothness by using your wet brush to grab the color. You can do the exact same thing with your pencils by simply getting your brush wet, making it damp, then wiping it on the surface of your pencil and you're good to go. You've got that same concept. So if you've only got money for one, maybe pencils are the right choice for you. Maybe it's blocks. Now you know the difference and I hope that helps you choose. Please do pop into the comments. I'll leave, um, I would like to hear from you which of these products you're most interested in, or if it's both, what ways you would use it. Give your tips and tricks in the comments and then go right below the video. It'll say show more in the description box of the video. I'll put links so that you can get your hands on all of this in my supplies guide and any of the, um, links that you click on that helps support my art ministry so they can bring you more great videos. I'll be back with another video soon. Talk to you later.